Are you ready? Always. Always ready. That's it. It's the John Packman Podcast coming to you from Connecticut Valley School of Music and Dance, beautiful downtown Portland, Connecticut. Come over the bridge, start looking left. Uh, what else do I say? If you're watching this on YouTube, like, subscribe, hit the bell. We are here today. Today with. It's not getting work on that timing still. All right. We're here. Guitar player. Guitar player. Producer. Mm. Composer. Gemini. Taurus. Scorpio. Aquarius. 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 Jeff Pivar. Mr. Jeff Pivar is here. Hi, hi. From the West Coast. Yeah. Currently. Mm -hmm. Oregon. Oregon. Yeah. Here he is. Guitar player. But from here. From yeah. Here. Yeah. This will always be my home. Nice. New nice. England. Nice. Connecticut. Yeah. Why not? Got to be from somewhere. That's it. Yeah. <laughs> um, do you want to uh, take us back to the beginning? Huh. Well, you know, really, uh, besides being a kid that attempted to grow up from good, in the 60s. Luck. Let right? me know what that's like. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> and, you know, uh, I, I really, with what's going on on the planet now, I feel so lucky when I was... It, 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 of my lineage, you know, in other words, when I decided, if we decide to come in when we do, who sure. knows, Yeah, right? who knows. But, um, you know, the 60s, wow, what a revolution yeah, of art, culture, you know, so much going on. But anyway, so I, I was a product of that. And such a huge thing for me was seeing the Beatles on Ed Sullivan, probably most of the mu musicians yep. we know, Yep. was that was kind of this catapult of not only being inspired by the vivaciousness and the expression of that music, but also uh, the joy, the personality, yeah, yeah. the, the uh, passion, the, uh, yeah. So that changed my life. And that's when I started playing air guitar. <laughs> so I got so really you started on, good. What, you, what model? Air, was uh, it? <laughs> <laughs> you know. Well, you I know. started student model air. You're right. Yeah. You know? Yeah. Exactly. <laughs> <laughs> and you know, once you kind of cut your teeth at that, yeah. Then my brother Steve, who's like ten years older than me, okay. He brought home a guitar from college and left it the, during the summer when he was off. <clears throat> excuse me, being a lifeguard at Banner Lodge, which is uh, in Connecticut. Uh-oh. Uh, 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 somewhere. Dave knows where that is. Yeah, Banner Dave Lodge. knows everything. I played there for 20 years. Oh, you played there. So, so there you go. Wow. So, of course, being a young, handsome, you know, uh, uh, athletic young man at, uh, at that age, sure. he had little time to play guitar. You know? Sure. So uh, by the time he came home, I had only... Uh, I, not only had I learned all the things that he may have tried to learn, but he could see that this thing should be left with me. So, sure. so a kid down the street, David Kaplan, my only guitar teacher, actually, that was hired to be a guitar oh, teacher, cool. showed me. The first song was Well Respected Man by the Kinks. I don't know that. No, of course you don't. I have to check it out. You don't know it? I don't. I actually don't. She gets up in the morning and she goes to sleep at nine. Anyway. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I right. think I do. Yeah. I'm not. I'm not a Kinks expert. I get it, but I, I will be it. someday. Well, it's a great tune, and it's part of you know the story, isn't it? Sure. Um, thing that was really funny was what town is this? By this the is way? Bloomfield, Connecticut. Okay, Bloomfield, Connecticut. Yeah, that's where I first cut my teeth. So the thing that was so cute was you know I'm I'm, I'm thinking David was or is. Oh, six years older than me. So he was, you know, just a teenager. I was 10. Whoa. And um, he was, he put the lyrics out and, and put the chords above it, but he couldn't remember what the second chord, what the name was. Okay. It's C, E minor, A minor, right? So at that time, Batman was really big. Sure. So he called the E minor Zap. Oh, <laughs> so it was C zap A minor. Sure. So I, whenever I play E minor, I I have to think. You just zap. picture it. Zap. I have to think zap. <laughs> <laughs> Is there a pow chord? Um, I hope so. <laughs> pow. I hope so. There Zoom. must be. There's got to be. Yeah. Anyway, that's cool. This is you know kind of memories uh, back in the day, and and please please be me. I'm sorry. Please please me by the Beatles was number two. Oh, the second sure. song I learned. The rest of it. 
you know, I bought a book that had songs that were on the radio, and that was really my first really big uh, influence. Was listening to transistor radio by my ear every night when I went to sleep. That's and what the they thing say. that was right, the thing that was so cool, everything was on the radio, all the styles, yeah, yeah, Motown, yeah, country. That's what they say. You know, yeah. I mean, it was all homogenous back then. It was such a great time. Yep. Um, and then the rest, uh, I just started teaching myself songs, you know, get, getting a, getting records and kind of, oh, this Figuring is this. It out. Yeah. Yeah. So that's, that's cool. kind of the, does that kind of How, satiate that yeah. question at yeah, least yeah. to start it? Yeah. <laughs> you know? So only guitar initially. Correct. Or so Correct. guitar is your thing. Yeah. Guitar was like definitely that's... the thing for Was for it George time. or John? Uh, yeah, it's a good question. You know, like, were you like, I'm going to be the lead guy? Who doesn't sing as much? Yeah. Could you tell the difference? Well, I'll tell then? this. I'll tell you this. Um, you know, being a um, being a person like myself, it's not just the guitar that hits me. You sure. know, there's a personality, and I think there was a thing from Paul that, uh, you know, kind of a a boy crush. Yeah, thing. yeah, yeah. Sure. And and I'm I'm a very healthy, you know. Sure regular guy sure. not into men romantically right but sure. but being influenced by someone's spirit yeah 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 and the thing that's so cool is that however many years later i had a chance to hang with paul uh, in a rehearsal with him and get a chance to talk to him and what a thrill you know to have that full yeah, circle I, I couldn't experience yeah, but admittedly lennon was also huge for me and then you know as as my life has gone on then i got introduced to harrison's music yeah and, oh i just love it yeah, i yeah, mean yeah. so all of them you know individually and i've, I've hung with ringo once or twice too Whoa. so so That's that funny. you know it's just crazy um being this kid who uh was influenced by the beatles so heavily yeah ha i had no idea at that point in time that this was just the beginning of this trajectory of working with so many iconic artists and so many opportunities yeah, right. that I would like to say, <clears throat> I like this word manifestation. Manifestation meaning like you could say, wow, I was so lucky or you know, this is blind luck or whatever, but I believe we as human beings are infinitely more powerful than we could ever imagine to manifesting what it is that we desire and that's kind of easy to say when you can look back and go look at all these things that i was well instead of saying lucky fortunate enough sure. to manifest through my interest through my passion through my going after opportunities yeah, for yeah. my creating opportunities i love this one saying that like a magnet i draw opportunity to me and it's a cocky statement but at the same time is it possible that we are that powerful that we if if we actually say that that it has some kind of effect on what transpires in our life it, again just sure. just be. a possibility yeah you know anyway i i For sure. have been very fortunate that the way the dominoes have fallen that opportunities have presented themselves to me and i have acted upon them in a way that seemed to kind of uh, be in balance with them uh, being f um, be, it, it being a, a, an opportunity that fell into fruition. That's yeah, 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 yeah. Far out. Yeah. So I, I still, you know, believe in that strongly. Yeah. And and even as <clears throat> things happen, like what's going on right now, uh, I've had to become inventive how to keep creative how to keep finances coming and uh you know years before this i um learned pro tools and i learned how to be an engineer and i learned how to be a multi-instrumentalist sure. i learned how to forgive me use drum programs and and be able to if if i didn't have a drummer at my availability yeah, yeah. i could do tracks and sound like there's a professional drummer sure almost uh, being on, on a track. So, you know, ultimately, I love that saying, the only limitation is our imagination. And so I kind of follow that lead constantly where I'll be asked to do something. Hey, uh, I got a, a movie. Would you like to do the score? And, you know, you know that um, the Animal House scene where there's the angel and the devil yeah, yeah. and the devil's going, Jeff, you've never done a film score. There's no way you can do this. And the angel's going, well, 
here's an opportunity to learn. Just do it. Yeah, accept sure. it. And oh, then yeah. you accept it and you oh, do yeah. it. Oh, you yeah. know, how do we learn how to do anything? We don't have an idea and then we figure it out, hopefully. Yep. yep. You know? That's all I do. Right? Doing it right now. <laughs> well, you right do now. it really well. Well. Yeah, really whatever. well. Um, no, I, I, I know exactly what you mean. Yeah, that's yeah. My, my thing. I don't, I'm not the biggest uh, go, uh, the biggest go getter. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> but my policy is if something lands in my lap mm -hmm. through no effort of my own or no seeming effort of my own, mm -hmm. my job is to do my best with no question. Well, it shows. It, w well, I mean, I'm just, that's my little compromise is, you know, I may not go after things, but yeah, like, um, mm -hmm. well, I wrote, wrote that book. I wrote a book years it's ago. Amazing. And that same thing. I'm like, I have no, and I just said, listen, you can't say no. Yeah. You, you don't know how to write a book, but the person that you will be will have written that book. Yes. So you just go, all right, you know what? Let me, sure. You, you can't, you can't do this, <laughs> but you're going to become the person that does this mm -hmm. as you're doing it. So, well, there's a lot of voices, aren't there? And there is that voice that says you can't do this. And then you can also listen to the voice that, that you just said yeah. that even though there's, I'm hearing this voice that says I can't do it. There's another voice that's saying, why not? Why can't I, uh, apply myself sure. because your interest and your passion right. has has influence on that guy that says you can't do it, and then yeah. you kind of convince that guy. Holy man! Yeah, yeah, wow. yeah, yeah, yeah. I was going to swear, and I yeah, didn't. that's all right. Yeah, that, that you can convince yourself. Oh yeah! Wow, you can surprise yourself, and yep. and that's why I've always surrounded myself with the best musicians that I can. You included, you know, you want to be around people who inspire you, who push you to be better than you are. Oh yeah. And that's how you, yeah. you know, I, I got uh, called years ago to do this band jazz is dead, you know, with uh, Rod Morgenstein and T Lavis from the Dixie Dregs sure. and Alfonso Johnson, the bass player from weather report. Now these are all musicians. I, I was a fan of. Yeah. Yeah. And I remember seeing the Dregs go, I'm never going to play with musicians this good. Yeah, yeah. And yeah. five years later, there you are. I'm invited to be in a band with them. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know? Sure. So, how do you do it? Well, the guy who says, the, the voice who goes, uh, yeah, yeah. you're not good enough. And then the voice goes, well, I'm certainly going to try to be. And then all of a sudden, you're pushed to, to, perform or or come up with the goods yeah. that you had no idea you could do it. Yeah, yeah, definitely. So, yeah. Especially when survival, when your survival is in play. Exactly. <laughs> it's thing. so true. And and I feel that way every night. Yeah, yeah, every yeah. night I yeah, pick, oh, yeah. pick up the guitar. I die. don't take it for granted. No. I never do. No. And, and I'm fortunate that way. You know, I don't think I'll ever. I mean, the, the other saving grace for me is this, that I believe everyone is equal. Everyone has a right for their heartbeat for the way that they, their heart speaks, the way that they want to communicate from the, the essence of their being. And so it doesn't have to be the best thing that's ever happened. It just has to be honest. It has yeah, to yeah. be directly from who you are. Yep. And Only a, you have your voice. Oh, exactly. You know, and I, I said this, I, I got asked to speak at uh, Berkeley with, with T. Lavitz, who was teaching there, and Rod Morgenstein, who was teaching there. And I said, I know half of this room can play circles around what I can do. But I know, also know, when I pick up the guitar and I play the note, the same note that's on every guitar that's ever been made, when I play it, it's my note. Yep. And and the note is a um, expression of not just that note, but it's a connection of who you are coming through that note. Oh, definitely. And it, and music is just this profound yeah, yeah. communication of someone's essence, mm -hmm. right? Yeah. So that's that's what gives me faith when I'm playing in front of people that I know who who either intimidate more, me because of how much they've been able to um, uh, show, you know, how amazing they are. Sure. And, you know, of course, there's that voice, you know, you're never going to be that good and blah, blah, blah. Yeah, you're yeah. probably boring them. And then there's that voice. But you know what? This is just my offering. That's that, right. And, and so that's what kind of keeps me coming back at it as well as just the challenge to see, can I do this? Can I can I convince myself? Can I show myself tonight? You know, the guy who, who, who said, I can't write the book. The yeah, same yeah. guy, I can't play guitar as well as I did whatever. And yeah. then you just play and that's all it, all it has to be yeah 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 definitely no i mean i i you know i go through the same thing myself i try to my thing is um 
I try to bring nothing, bring zero. Yeah. Like when you, I mean, other than kind of knowing the songs, but it's like yeah. zero because if I have an expectation, right, then I'm I'm trying to make I'm trying to make something. Yeah, and you just like, and like you, I just do or die. Yeah. Like we're at zero. I'm gonna yeah. see if I can make something happen. Yeah. If you make something happen, you're like, oh cool, that happened, and that's it. Well, and that like, brings up uh, uh, one of my. Is, is the word credo where, where you kind of make these kind of proclamations sure. of how you should live your life? Sure. Less expectations, yep. less disappointments. Interesting. So yeah. if you go in yeah, yeah. kind of clean and just go, yeah. I'm going to I'm gonna allow myself yeah. to be fragile, nervous, yep. uh, vulnerable, mm-hmm. and honest. Yeah. And, and if you come from that, then you're clean. You're not, oh, I hope I can play this. Like, like yeah, ooh, yeah, there's yeah. someone I want to show them how fast I can play. You uh-huh. know, it's like you, if you come from just being connected and the other one, that the other kind of credo or uh, kind of sure. um, thing that I have learned that is really important to me is if you actually get your ego out of the way, if you allow this thing that I, you can call it the muse or yeah. you can call it, buddha or you can call it tony or whatever you want to call it but yes there's something bigger than what we are yeah and so if we get out of the way and we become kind of the conduit of the wire the electricity can come through that wire yep and so you take yourself a little bit out of the equation allow the music to play you instead of you feeling like i've got to play it right yeah well if you're filling the wire then yeah it can't come from anywhere amen yeah so that all those things have been kind of something that's kept me going in times of self-doubt because i think i mean self-doubt is pretty standard uh, equipment in being a human being and and some people you know pretend or some people just push it away and and you know all good i just uh, for me i feel like the way that i can get to the truest part of my music is to allow myself to be vulnerable so then i can get to you know that the real uh center of the gut if you will sure yeah yeah i have this uh this i don't know i don't know what it is a saying or a feeling i get with with players it's like sometimes and i have to i have to stop myself from being this too when i hear people play i don't want to hear what you know <laughs> i want to hear how you feel yeah i don't want to know what you know right because we can all know yeah. I, like i can find out what lick that is like, yeah 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 i don't care what you know mm-hmm. i mean i care a little but it's like yeah. With players, I'm like, I don't want to hear all the possibilities of mm-hmm. what you know. I want you to commit to something, mm-hmm. and I want to hear how you. I want to hear your feeling coming through it. Yeah, and that's it. And that's what I try to do is I don't show people what I know because mm-hmm. I don't know anything. Well, being an accompanist, I think it's different. I don't know if it's different, but you being mm-hmm. pretty much the, I don't want to say the solo instrument, mm-hmm. but I'm a born accompanist, so I don't have anything almost to say on my own. Mm-hmm. I'm only an accompanist or an enhancer. I mm-hmm. try to figure out what's going on and how can I kind of mm-hmm. help this be a better version of what it is. Mm-hmm. And so Great. I'm always getting out of the way because I don't want to be, I'm mm-hmm. just a drummer. I'm the accompanist. I'm not the thing. Well, But my job, is, I think I'm, I'm the good second in command or third in command. I'm the, I'm the one that's standing behind. Mm-hmm. I'm not the one in front, which is why I chose the instrument that I Except chose. Except that I... think I, that's where my ability <clears throat> But I've been in uh, ensembles with you, and one of which that's going to play on Sunday. Yeah. Uh, where the band is called Guitarnist. Sure. And it's a quartet with Scott Morowski and Dave Lavosa, you and I. And every show we've ever done, the first song is a song we create in the moment. Yeah, yeah. And it's often the best song of the night. Yeah, or yeah. at least it's certainly... <laughs> and I don't remember any of them. No. Because but, they're gone. But, but a lot of... No, a yeah. lot of them were recorded. And oh, okay. I, and I have yeah. some stuff that is yeah, mind-blowing. Cool. I'm just saying you don't... I don't remember them because well, they're not a song. It just, well, that was that thing that happened. It's and, performance art. Yeah, yeah. But, yeah. but the reason why I bring it up is because so much of it has to do with each person bringing in their voice. So really... Yeah. Uh, while you're an accompanist, sure, you're also a leader. You know, in this instance, and, and if the you, moment comes and I yeah. feel like okay, I, I want to pull it over here. Well, what you add to it totally changes the composition, and and so that's just one of the things that's so exciting about doing that, having the gall to <laughs> have people, co- you know, come to a show, pay money, and like, oh, we're just going to jam. We have no idea what we're going to do. Sure. But um, I think that a certain <laughs> amount of people by now 
Yeah. That's part of it. They realize these guys are going to make it up. Yeah. Yeah. And and I love that. And then I, no matter what song we make up, it always ends up being the chicken. Oh, it, it has certainly, it's gone <laughs> ends into Ends up that. being the chicken, no it, matter what. It's gone no into that. <laughs> you know. but, um, but anyway. Tell us more, yeah. um, at least how career, mm-hmm. where, how, mm-hmm. went from who to who to okay. where. All right. I'll try. Just to get it's, the it's, architecture. It's, 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 had a, it's had a lot of twists and turns, sure. and I don't remember them all. But, um, you know, playing in uh, the bootleg band was kind of the first gig that I did, I think, at age 14 or 15, where I was, I guess it's a professional musician when you play somewhere and get paid. And I was the sure. youngest kid in the band. And we were doing R&B music. Uh, we were doing some Van Morrison. We, we I think there was there was one tune that was a big feature for me was my old school Steely Dan where yeah. I recreated the solo from the record and, sure. and then we also did you know Allman Brothers uh, Whipping Post and sure. Elizabeth Reed and all that stuff so um, it was very exciting for me to be asked by musicians who were you know three and four and five years older than I I. Uh, one of the musicians told me, yeah, your mom used to drive you to rehearsals and drop you <laughs> off and we'd bring you home. And, you know, this little kid, you know, playing guitar. I was like, wow, this little kid's so good. Yeah, yeah, you know? yeah. So uh, I'm really happy that um, I was uh, surrounded by uh, elders, Always dare I best. say. Yeah, I did that same experience. Right. Yep. And, and where they see you, they recognize that you have this thing and uh, to to kind of enhance their thing and their their music and and vice versa. So that was kind of the first foray into wow, this is an opportunity to uh, flourish as a uh, musician who plays every weekend. And I actually I don't re- uh, recommend this at all, uh-huh. but I I ended up leaving school because I knew music was it for me. Sure. And, and I left in my junior year, although my parents had broken up and they weren't living together. And, you know, it wasn't a kind of a unified thing. And they tried to keep me in school. And I tried a couple more weeks. And then I just said, look, I, I know what I'm going to do. Sure. I know music is it my happens. thing. You yeah. know, and, and I, you know, I was really happy when I graduated by oh, okay. that much. <laughs> you know what I mean? Right. Like, yeah. I don't even. Yeah. So. Well, for me, it was so exciting to be able to, uh, after my father kind of saying, look, I really think you should finish school. And then however many years later, uh, flew him up to see me playing in, in Carnegie Hall with Crosby and Nash. Yeah, you know? right. And it felt like, <laughs> see? Yeah, sure. It, this worked out, sure, Dad. Sure, don't sure. worry, man. Sure. You know? So, uh, but anyway, Bootleg Band. And then there was a band from the Windsor area, uh, Pat and Paul Nigro, who uh, are not here anymore yep. physically but spiritually they'll always be in my heart sure and uh it started off with uh the two of them and al taylor on drums pat was playing keyboards and keyboard bass uh and then we got brian mclaughlin into the band but that band was called crystal clear okay and uh we were playing all instrumental music and that also was a, a fantastic opportunity to uh work on improv it was mainly jazz influenced but sure. it was you know um, R and B. This would have been what year ish? This would be seventy five. Okay. Yep. So your bell bottoms. Yeah, probably you know, a giant mustache. Uh, the there's thing. a good chance that I, I I don't know <laughs> if I could grow one yet. But yeah, I'm not sure. But uh, you know, uh, and then uh, some of the Hartford area bands, um, A to the Bar, sure. which I was in before you. Right. Right. Yeah. Yeah. And uh, A to the Bar and the Shibu Wall Stars. Okay. That yeah. I was kind of in again and off again. Um, I remember I got a call from my friend Michael Ruff, who was a keyboard player a number of years y- uh, younger than I, and we were doing some jam sessions with uh, the drummer Peter Ziffel and Brian McLaughlin. And Michael ended up moving to Woodstock and then moved to L.A. and he was the band leader for Ricky Lee Jones in 1983. Okay. And he called me and he said, "Jeff, if you want to fly yourself out, you can come stay with me." I'll get you uh, an audition with Ricky. And so I came out and uh, I was really nervous. Mm. And I had you ever even been to California before? I had. Okay. I had once. All right. I had been there once. Yeah. Uh, Visiting family. My my mother's brother was out there. Um, So 
Michael uh, kind of took me under his wing. He wanted his homeboy in the band, sure. and and even though I flubbed the rehearsal, I kind of froze, and it just it just didn't it wasn't good. Hmm. Michael said to me that night, "Listen, stay in town. You're just keeping a, working on this stuff." Yeah, and, yeah. And I was like, "Whoa, I just totally screwed it." I'm you not know, I'm not good enough. Yeah, I'm not good enough. The, of course, yeah. thank you. And Ricky wasn't there. This was just you know uh, sure. auditioning for the band and and for Michael. He said, "Keep working on it." Who was on drums? Just uh, curious. Tony Bronigal. Oh from, yeah, okay. from Bonnie's yep, band. Sure, and, yep. sure. And he's now uh, does a lot of stuff with the Phantom Blues Band, Taj Mahal, yep, and those yep, guys. Yep. Um, so about five days later, after I'm working on the stuff every day, he said, "Come in tomorrow. It's not an audition. It's a rehearsal." Oh, nice. And so we just rehearsed, and I felt more, you know, sure. comfortable. And he just kind of kept me in there. And then one day, Ricky shows up. I'll never forget this. Oh, we're boy. playing. We're playing one of these tunes. It's called "Weasel and the White Boy Cool" or something like that. It's yeah, got yeah. this. Ka-ching, 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 ka-ching. It's from her first record, yeah, right? Yeah. And we're playing it, and she walks in, and they, you know, she puts a guitar on, and then she starts walking towards me while we're playing this thing, and she's walking closer, and she's walking closer, and we're, you know, just playing yeah, the groove, yeah, yeah. and she puts her head right next to mine, and I am freaking out, <laughs> you know, but I'm like. Jeff, just be there for the girl. Yeah, just yeah, yeah, just yeah. do your thing yeah, yeah. and like you're the man for the job. Sure. And anyway, that was kind of the first tour that I did that uh instead of playing in clubs, we were sure. playing concert halls and wow. And it was uh and we played Red Rocks. Wow. Uh, you know, yeah, and yeah. oh my God, what a spiritual experience yeah, yeah, that is. From this stage, if you look up and there's these red rocks on either side and then the sky above and it looks like you're looking at god from the inside of an eyeball yeah right right you know, it's just it's like it chills <laughs> yeah, you know, yeah, from yeah. That stage. i've never been there yeah. it's it's glorious yeah, yeah. It's and, it, and, and it felt like you know this this feels right there's yeah, something yeah. about this, this there's a there's a kind of cool story where uh my brother steve and my mother had moved to Colorado. My mother had a really tough time, and that's a story doesn't need going into a lot, but my parents had broken up, and she was emotionally not doing well. Okay. And she ended up moving out closer to my brother to just get a change of sea, sure. scenery. Uh, when I came out to visit her, my brother said, let's go to this place called Red Rocks. I want to show you this yeah, place, right, right? right? And we drive up during the day, and we walk out, and I see this huge amphitheater, and I turn to both of them, and I said, I'm going to play here. Yeah. And it was only, I don't know, four or five years later. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, where you it are. was the first of maybe 12 times that wow. I played there. Yeah. That's cool. So, uh, so Ricky, and then the thing that was really sobering was I had played with, uh, I think I had a gig with the All Stars then, the Shibu All Stars. Okay. They had to replace me. Yeah. And I came home to no work. So, ba- back from, to Connecticut. Yeah. From like oh, wow. the big, I how, made it. How long did you do the. How long was it? Was it was seven weeks uh, tour. Oh, wow. You know? And then you came back. I and came back and I had nothing. Nothing. So wow. there and. Who, who an, took the guitar gig? Oh, I don't remember. <laughs> I don't remember. <laughs> there and I remember, note to self. Yeah. Irons in the fire. Yeah, yeah. You can't just count on any yeah. one gig. You yeah. have to diversify. And you couldn't stay out in LA yet. Like you weren't. I just wasn't living there. Yeah, you yeah, know, yeah I was yeah, home. Yeah. But but it was, it was a, a really good lesson. It's kind of like. You know, when I was a kid and I look up at this um, edge of a table and I put my hand up there and I burnt the hell out of my hand because it sure. was a, it was a oven. Sure. Note to self, don't put hand up yeah, no. to the top of the yeah. thing where if you yeah. don't know what's going on. And this was another note to self, don't just get a gig with one band. You need to diversify yeah. and have your talents, you know, in all these other places, which is, which has served me well when I decided to learn how to do pro tools and learn how to engineer yeah, yeah, yeah. and learn how yeah. to play lots of different instruments oh yeah no me too you know? I mean, i'm doing 50 things yeah yeah but look at you you know what well, you're doing here well. so um so let's see so so then you come back home just hustling now yeah hustling i played with linda in the love letters sure uh bernie uh the drummer bernie sirocco yep. and uh i haven't i, I, I lost bernie Great, great musician. And so, Eight to the guy. Bar was before this. Yes. How long were you in that band? Talk about what this for a minute. Um, well, I'd say a couple of years. Okay. You know, and and it was really exciting because I brought instrumental pieces into the band. And Paul Nigro, who, well, when I joined the band, it was a country swing band, right? With, with Bubs Brown, yeah, uh, sure, on on pedal steel, and then 
uh, they kind of switched around to go Motown instead of yep. they got rid of yep. pedal steel and they got Paul Magro in the band who I had been in sure. the, Crystal Clear with. So that was very exciting to be reunited with Paul. Paul and I were very, very close. Yeah, I never met him. And we had a horn section sound because we were doing a lot of tunes where the, the yeah, guitar and, and the sax would, would play either unison or harmony. Mm-hmm. So we, we really read each other very well and we wrote songs in crystal clear where we were cool that was the vocal instead of the vocal yeah yeah yeah, yeah uh That's so awesome. so yeah uh but you know do you want me to continue on the lineage well, yeah or? so okay. yeah so you All come right. back you're scrambling so, yeah so um let's see i i moved to uh, i got an opportunity to audition for james montgomery and i moved to boston okay and i played with james montgomery this is 1980 right uh this is before ricky actually oh okay yeah this is before ricky and uh, so I, I had been kind of going back and forth a little bit. And again, you know, my memory, sure. is, this is a long time ago. But, and that was a great, you know, opportunity. Uh, James Montgomery had his regional sure. fame, if you will. Yeah. And uh, he was a real character. I really like him a lot. Very talented man, great performer. And, uh, and so, yeah, Ricky was 1983. So here, this, this is a, a very cool story. And it's, it's, it takes about 10 minutes. Is that all right? Or is it? Sure. This is how I got the gig with Ray Charles. Sure. Okay, so admittedly, uh, part of the reason I got this gig with Ray Charles was I had been asked to go into a recording studio in Hartford. The, the studio was called The Tape Works. Sure. The guy who owned it was Doug Cupper, who yep. is one of my dearest friends yeah, in the world. Yeah, we talked, Joe Greco was here last week. We talked about nice. Tape Works. Well, Doug uh, <clears throat> noticed this young kid who pulled up to his studio in a Volkswagen with a Marshall 412 <laughs> in the back seat. Sure. And he said, you don't have to unload that. I've got a Fender d- Princeton and Deluxe. You're going to love them. Yeah, you know? yeah, yeah. And I'm like, but but that's my sound. No, no, just check yeah, it out. Yeah, yeah. Anyway, long story short, um, Doug noticed that there was this talent in this young kid, and he started calling me for session work. And as time moved on, he gave me this the keys to his studio. Yeah, right, right. So yeah, I can sure. go in at night. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And I did that for out. years. I, I'd finish a gig at 2.30 in the morning. I was there until 6 in the morning. Yeah, Sometimes sure. he'd be coming in at 8 o'clock, and I'd still be there working on yeah, something yeah. slumped over the console. That's great. So I had a burning, crazy passion to wrangle this yeah. music thing, right? Why not? Well, t- it, it, it ended up being to my advantage because I had amassed a bunch of pieces that I had kind of mixed myself and, and that that where I would be able to show kind of what I do. Fast forward a few years, Ray Charles is coming to the Palace Theater in New Haven sure. on a Friday night, and I didn't have a gig. And I remember seeing it in the Hartford Advocate, Ray Charles. And it's like, I've been hearing this name forever, sure. and I have never seen this guy play, and I got to go to... I got to go to this. Yeah. That afternoon, the phone rings, and it was my friend Tom Cote, Tom Cote, who played saxophone with Street Temperature. That was another, actually, that was a band that I skipped. Street yeah. Temperature was another band I played in. We played the 880 Club. It was sure. mostly instrumental. It was a fantastic opportunity yeah. to improvise and sure. play music and just, you know, play sure. wild guitar solos. Yeah. And it was a, every Friday night. That was a house band at, at the 880 Club. So that was an important part of my learning sure. uh tom calls me says jeff uh i just heard that ray charles guitar player had quit the band our friend morris pleasure who's a bass player mainly is filling in oh boy and you should go down and get that gig now i had gotten that gig with ricky lee jones and she had hired me to play on one of her records and and there was a a rolling stone review that came out about this one song and the, there was a line in the review that said and the graceful pluck and weave of Jeff Pivar's guitar on It Must Be Love, blah, 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 blah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So I grabbed the Rolling Stone and brought that with me. It's yeah, clout. Like, I'm somebody. Yeah. I'm somebody. Check it out. I'm yeah. in Rolling Stone. Yeah, yeah, right? yeah. So I decided to go early, knowing that bands show up before the sure. gig and do sure. their sound check. And I'm waiting in front of the Palace Theater, and all, all of a sudden up pulls this Trailways looking bus. Yeah, yeah. And the musicians start falling out. And I went to the first guy, Hey, who's your band leader? And Mark Curry, who was the trumpet player, who told me about Clifford Solomon being the band leader. And I went up to Clifford and I said, hey, man, I'm, I'm interested in the gig. I hear yeah, yeah. you might be needing a guitar player. Was you... Morris in the band? Morris was just filling in. Oh, I got and you. And the okay, reason so. why was Morris Pleasure, who was another young um, 
destined sure. uh, musician contacted Ray Charles Enterprises and sent tapes and said, I want to be in this band previously. Yeah, right. So as a bassist. Gotcha. And they contacted Morris. Morris told me that he tried to reach me and he couldn't reach me. Maybe he didn't have my number or maybe he didn't call. Maybe he wanted to do it. But <laughs> but either way, I, I believe him, I think. But, um, now, but, <laughs> but, but and Morris is one of my dearest sure, friends. Sure. Um, so anyway, I went down thinking, you know, when Tom had call, called me and said, you should go down and get that gig. And yeah, like, yeah. Heck yeah, I should. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So uh, Clifford invited me to come inside. He said, look, we're getting ready for sound check. Why don't you hang by the side of the stage? Yeah, just we're doing two shows tonight. Let me talk to you on the break. So he left me side stage. Here I am seeing the Ray Charles band with the with the suits on sure. and all the music in front of him. Now here's the, the cue the angel and yeah, devil. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And the angel and the devil's going, Jeff, you don't read music. Yeah, you, yeah. You these are real this. cats. These yeah, are the these are real guys. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You, you don't read notation and you isn't real. Hmm. And then the angel's going, Well, you know how to read chord charts. And you, maybe it's not sure. that, maybe you don't have to do a ton of notation. Maybe sure. it's, you know, you could get through this. So anyway, do they do the first set. Clifford comes off stage. He goes, what do you think? And I said, oh man, I'd, I'd love to do this. He goes, do you have a tape? I said, no, but I'll be right back. I got yeah. in my car. I drove from New Haven to Hartford. Yeah, right. And got the your, studio. Yeah. I dubbed off three of the bluesiest, gospeliest stuff as fast as I could. I drove 90 miles an hour, oh. yeah, sure. turned the corner. And as I turned the corner, they're getting on the bus. And Clifford, hand him Ooh. the tape. He called me the next day to come to New York to audition. Ooh. Did the audition in a hotel room conference uh, hall sure. uh, by the airport. And... Um, Basically, the audition was, there were some charts, but a lot of it, I, I understood that, yeah. well, in the big band, the guitar is a rhythm instrument sure. and a comping instrument. So if it says G7 uh, flat 13, if I play a G7, it's working fine because all the horns are playing all those extensions. Sure. And, sure. and the only, only other thing was a guitar solo that had a written part. I said, Clifford, my reading isn't that great. It goes, oh, well, I'll hum it to you. Do, 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 do. I go, well, hell, sure. Yeah, I got and that. He goes, I, and then he goes, you know, we do we do the big band stuff, and then we do all that country. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Blank. Sure. And then Ray Charles loves the blues, so we'd love to, you know, have you play a blues tune. So I've you, been very you, comfortable yeah, with yeah, that. Yeah, yeah, I got that. And so I got the call the next day to come to uh, Brooklyn Performance Center to do the first gig with Ray Charles. Wow. It was a, just like that. It was a horrible blizzard. Ooh. My friend Doug drove me. the The weather was horrible. We get there like 15 minutes before downbeat. Um, oh. We were freaking out, but we got there, and Ray Charles' manager looks at the two of us and says, uh, "Your friend can't stay." And I said, "What?" He said, it, "It's sold out. And there's no seats. Your friend can't stay." I said, "Excuse me, sir. We just drove five hours. What would have been two hours yeah. in in, uh, in the snow." If my friend can't stay, I can't stay. Whoa. He said, oh. so he put yeah. him in a chair on the side. Yeah, and, yeah, yeah. and I found out later that they brought Ray Charles down and sat him right next to my friend Doug. Who, yeah. uh, you know, and, and Ray Charles could feel someone was next to him. And Ray Charles leans over and said, how you doing? You know, he started talking to my <laughs> yeah, friend. Yeah, yeah. Anyway, finished the gig. Wow. I got offered the gig. But it's, you know, it's a great uh, opportunity yeah, that yeah. I kind of grabbed the reins yeah, and, yeah. and made it happen and the rest is kind of history ray charles asked me to come to his studio do some recording i had heard stories that he, they didn't pay well mm -hmm. you know uh, uh, my my friend who was the bass player who sat next to me on ray's plane we were, we were traveling sure. a lot on, on the plane and he goes yeah we were in the studio all day working on one song and he only paid every guy forty dollars all day long wow. so when ray charles asked me to do some recording i said well mr charles i'd love to come out and do some recording but just so you know i get double scale and he goes Double scale. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Honey, I don't pay God double scale. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but if you come out, I'll take care of you. And hey, hey, what am I going to do? Say no? Yeah. So he got wow. the Jewish guitar player to play on the Christmas <laughs> record. Yeah. <laughs> so, yeah. yeah. Right. So Ray Charles and I'll try to, let's see. Uh, you met, so what the first moment you met him, what was that like? Well, I'll, I'll say this. 
I learned early on I could get Ray Charles to scream in delight Ooh. with a well-placed guitar note. Oh, boy. And imagine the power I felt like I could wield. Yeah, it's like crazy. each show, I'm out to get him. I'm yeah, yeah, to, yeah. It's yeah, like yeah, going yeah, to the yeah. skate shoot, you know, where you hear the yeah, ding. Yeah, yeah. You know, and I'll throw out a note. Ah, I didn't. Ah, didn't. Oh, there it is. Oh, yeah, oh. I got the he, note. He, he turned around. You nasty boy. You know what note it was? It Zap. Was, Zap. Or whatever. Thank you. You're right. <laughs> the zap note. Thank you. Yo. It, 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 it's all the for zap note. full circle. You know Everything it, it happens in circles, oh. right? So, uh, That's heavy. Yeah. Uh, I mean, it, 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 it's Grasshopper and the Master. Yeah, you know yeah what I, I mean? can only imagine. And and, and I, there's a couple of videos on YouTube. If you uh, put in Jeff Pivar and Ray Charles, there's two videos there that you can see him visually, you know, yeah, oh, yeah, oh. yeah, yeah, yeah. It's what what a thrill! And when that record came out, I felt like this is like the the beginning and kind of a crystallization of this little kid who used to listen to Beatle records. Sure, just dreaming about playing guitar. And here I am. Yeah, my yeah. name's on the back of a Ray Charles record. Yeah, that's so crazy. it was kind of like this will live. This will outlive me. Yeah, you know. And luckily, it's Christmas. It's a Christmas record. every year. Yeah, yeah, every year forever. <laughs> yeah. yeah, that's heavy. That's Rudolph the Red Nosed Reindeer, okay. Yeah. All right. I had I had yeah. that record. Oh, Spirit I have of that. Christmas. Yeah, of course. Yeah. <laughs> I always I was a big Ray Charles fan. My fam my parents were. So no. I that's I had that record before. I didn't know that was you on it. Yeah. Now, oh yeah. That was Jewish every, every it's, year. It's a Jewish yeah. <laughs> yeah, every Rendition. year that record comes out. Yeah. Yeah. Funny. Yeah, I'm on a couple cuts on that. What child cool. is this? And, and okay. And Rudolph the Red Nosed Reindeer. I'll have to go back. So just to quickly sure. go through some of the other ones. Um Let's see. After Ray Charles, Joe Cocker, 1988. Wow. We ended up playing um, behind the Berlin Wall for 150,000 people. And in Dresden, this is, you know, while the wall sure. was up. Sure. And I remember taking a picture and having to go five frames to yeah, catch right, all the people. To well, to my surprise, it came out and it's on YouTube. Oh, if hey. you go uh, 1988, uh, Joe Cocker, Berlin, live wow. in Berlin. Uh, yeah. And, and th wow. they pan, you know, in between yeah, yeah, songs. Yeah. And it's as people as far as you yeah. can see. It was insane. Yeah, it's crazy. And then there's one other funny one. If you're going to look at YouTube, um, the beginning of that tour, we got brought to San Remo, Italy. And, and we, we only got half the band brought out. Okay. And Michael Lang, who was the Woodstock, one of the Woodstock promoters, okay. was Joe's manager. So Michael, so uh, what they often do with these types of television shows, which are basically San Remo is each band plays their hit single. Sure. And so what they often, I found out what they often do when they do records is they'll have the hit single without the vocal and then they can play it. For, because they can't mic everything in between each I, band going I see, on. I see. They'll play the tape and the lead singer sings the song live and the band just mimes. Oh. Well, half the band wasn't there. The oh. bass player wasn't there. So Michael oh. Lang was playing bass. Oh. The song is Unchained My Heart and it's a Clarence Clements saxophone solo yeah. and there's no saxophone player. Oh. So I say, um, what about the saxophone? I raise my hand and I said, <laughs> get me a sax. Ooh. Get me a sax. So and, there you and, are. And I will... I will play it in That's front of so millions fun. of people. That's so funny. And so it's on. I, I had been waiting for this thing there, to, there to come out on YouTube yeah. that somebody might post it. Yeah, yeah. And sure enough, about a year ago, it came out. And, Do, and playing the sax solo. And I'm taking the sax solo, the air, air so, sax, because I so I'd played air guitar for years. Sure. So yeah. why not kind of graduate like to the next? Do it. Yeah. <laughs> it's yeah. the next level. That's so funny. <laughs> Wow. So, Were your fingerings even close? Who knows? Oh, no. The thing that's really funny is it's a tenor sax solo, and I have a, uh, <laughs> an alto. Yeah. So, <laughs> But hey, you do what you got to do. And in fact, that night, Art Garfunkel wow. was there performing, and we were all hanging out at the bar, and I, I went up to uh, Artie, and, and I said, hey, man, I, I'm a big fan of your music. I'd love to play some music with you someday. He goes, oh, you know what? Oh, we're you're the alto sax player. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He said, we're thinking about ax uh, getting saxophone on the next tour. That's what he said to me. And, and then you're like, like, fine, uh, yeah. I'm going to learn how to play you're right. the voice. I'm going to learn how to play saxophone. <laughs> <laughs> learn how to play saxophone. I don't think so. Just to get the gig. Right. <laughs> so uh, Joe Cocker and then, let's see, Mark Cohn. Okay. Uh, which was a sure. thrilling opportunity to play in front of 2,000 people just as a duo. Wow. Yeah. And there were times where he was just singing 
mm-hmm. and I was either just playing acoustic guitar or we played the song Fever where I was just playing b- bass. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And I took a wah wah solo on Ooh, bass. And nice. it's on Austin City, City Limits. That's on YouTube as oh, well. Cool. Uh, so that was huge. And, and playing with Mark was how I got introduced to Crosby, Stills and Nash because we opened for Crosby, Stills and Nash for three shows. Uh, no, for about eight shows. And after three shows, Crosby came up to me and he said, Nash and I have been watching you. We think you'd be the perfect addition to our duo when we're not working with Steven. And I said, oh, wow. David, I'm sorry. I got some weddings back east. I don't know if I'm going to be able to. No, yeah, I didn't right, say right. That. <laughs> <laughs> So you were living back east during all this? Or? Yes. Wow. Yeah. Heavy. Between New York and Connecticut. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, at that uh, at that time I was married to uh, Dana Pomfret, my, sure. my first wife, who we are still really good friends. And yeah. She's a fantastic artist unto yeah. herself. Oh, and yeah. Played, I love Dana. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. She's fantastic. Yep. So, um, so, yeah, we had an apartment in New York, and I always kept a rent in Connecticut just to be able to get out in New York. Sure. But when I left Ray Charles, I a friend of mine uh, from New York, Rick Van Loon, had offered me his floor. And I stayed in his apartment a lot to kind of crack the New York scene. Sure. And I started playing on Bleecker Street for free yeah, yeah. or for whatever they would pay me. And then wow. you know how it goes. You get into an area and then your name starts to get around. Yep. Hey, Ray Charles' guitar player's here. Let's get him. And then, sure, sure. And then, you know, started getting gigs. And that's how I, uh, I got recommended to James Taylor. I gave James Taylor a tape. I did some studio work with James and when Mark Cohn moved to town, he had a connection to James and Mark uh, asked James, you know, what he, th- James, you know, what, what he thought he should do. And James sure. said, you should put a band together. And I've got a friend, Jeff Pivar, yeah, yeah, a great yeah. guitar player. So that's how I got the gig with Mark. Cool. Through, you know, so it's like this yeah, domino every, effect, uh, yeah, you know, right? Sure. Yeah. So, uh, but then, you know, Jazz is Dead and, oh, Phil Lesh and Friends toured with them. Had to learn 70 Grateful Dead songs <laughs> for that. Morris Pleasure got uh, me uh, the gig with Bette Midler a, yep. a, a number of years ago. Yep. Um, you know, a, a couple gigs with Odetta, played in Greece. Um, you know, and, and just all these experiences. It's like if I was a music student, which I am. But if I, if I was taking music courses, yeah. then in fact, all of these bands have been music courses for me. It's sure. an entirely different muscle. It's an yeah. entirely different opportunity to pull from your vocabulary, which is you, but it's also you're adapting yourself to the situation, just like Robert De Niro might be yeah, uh, yeah. a gangster or a father of the bride or yeah, whatever. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And I love these opportunities to be malleable and here I am in one band. I'm playing country uh, lap steel. You sure. know, I did a reunion tour for uh, the Flying Burrito Brothers, and I'm playing mm. lap steel guitar, blah blah blah, country music. And then I'm playing, you know, instrumental jazz. And then I'm playing sure. rock. And yep. you know, it's just so exciting to have a wide vocabulary. And that's one of the reasons why I think I've been as fortunate as I have because I have a, a deep well of understanding of yeah. lots of different styles. Got so. to, got to do it. Yeah, it's awesome. Yeah, I gotta love it. Yeah, yeah, all that stuff. So the, the latest thing that's coming up is the same guy who hired me for this band called Jazz is Dead, which was uh, Rod Morgenstein and T. Lavitz and Alfonso Johnson originally, and then it was Billy Cobham, um, wow. Kenny Gradney from Little Feet on sure. Bass and T. Lavitz, Whoa. and then another uh, faction where I got Dave Lavolsi into right. the band because I brought the guys into the studio at the Tape Works. Yeah. I, really got deep into the uh, arrangements for this band okay. when I got the call for it um, because uh, I I wanted to make sure I could play the arrangements. These guys play with Steve Morris. I don't play. Yeah, 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 sure. Also, um, for this band, Jazz is Dead, the idea of that band was an interpretive ensemble that takes the music of the Grateful Dead into kind of an interpretive jazz fusion type sure. of thing. So I wanted this music to be accessible. Anyway, long story short, I couldn't believe I was playing with these players. I took my own dime. I brought them into the studio and we recorded a record, which took me about over 10 years to finally mix Whoa. because I wanted someone to mix it who was as good as the music that was on. Yeah, yeah, on. yeah. And I hired uh, other special guests, Jerry Goodman from the Mahavishnu Orchestra okay. on, on yep. violin, Luis Conte to play percussion, sure. um, uh, Billy Holloman yep. plays on it, sure. plays horns on it, um, 
the the harmonica player from uh, Bela Flexman. Um, oh, Howard uh, Levy. Howard Levy. Yep. And yep. Uh, I am so thrilled with this record. It's such a bucket list thing. Yeah, yeah. Uh, yeah. Rod Morgenstein said to me, "This is one of his proudest accomplishments." In wow. His musical, Imagine musical that. career. Yeah. I, I couldn't believe it. That's you know? awesome. So you know. Uh, I just, you know, rather than say I've been lucky as hell, I have been so fortunate yeah, yeah. that through my dedication, my willingness to kind of lay it all out, yep. you know, I've, I've sometimes said, you know, being a musician and standing on a stage, it's like ripping your guts out sure. and putting it on the edge of a stick for all <laughs> to see, you know, it, I mean, it's, you have to be willing to, uh, yeah. throw it out there yeah, yeah. and, and not, uh, the, the one the saving grace for me is look this is just an offering yeah it, yeah yeah this doesn't have to be the best thing that you ever saw and if you dig it great and if you don't that's okay too right because i'm going to feel good about offering this gift yep. you know so yep no, so yeah I it's been that. it's been quite a ride you know and, it, and and so this this latest thing that's happening in january i have 27 gigs in 35 days Whoa. with a band called the gilmore project playing okay. the music of David Gilmore and Pink Floyd, oh, an right. interpretive ensemble. So it's not exactly a tribute band because yeah, we're yeah. not going to kind of try to sound exactly like it. Sure. But a little different than Jazz is Dead, where the Grateful Dead music is so improvisation uh, based. Yeah. We're going to, you know, I'm going to play a bunch of those Gilmore solos just because for me, it's like yeah. the head of, of the jazz tune. It's the melody, sure. right? Sure. He plays so lyrical. Yeah, yeah. But we've got some killer players. Chasm Sultan, who played sure. with Todd Rundgren in yep. Utopia. Yep. Scott Guberman, who's yep. uh, from the area, has yep. been playing with Phil Lesh. Mark Karen, who plays guitar with Bob Weir and the okay. other ones. And Prairie Prince on the drums. And yep. uh, so, yeah, we'll be wow. at the Ridgefield Playhouse. That's great. I think the th second or third week of January, if yeah. all this happens. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. these sure. days, we never know. Yeah. That's wow. Yeah. That's awesome. Yeah, it should be fun. I mean, it's iconic music, sure. certainly. And again, once again, you know, I'm so excited that I've had these opportunities to learn. You know, I had to learn Crosby, Sills, and Nash music. I oh, I played with Jefferson Starship too. I, I both first filling in on guitar, and then I got a tour with them for the Heroes of Woodstock tour. Oh boy, which was Jefferson Starship playing Jefferson Jefferson Airplane music. Sure. Uh, Country Joe, Canned Heat, sure. 10 Years After, sure. you know, all these guys, John Sebastian. Uh, so I, I had to learn all that music. Oh, it's boy. so exciting for me, you know, as a music student. Sure. Okay, this month, the yeah, music yeah. of Jefferson Airplane. Yeah, yeah, Okay, yeah, this yeah. month, Bette Midler. Okay, yeah, yeah. <laughs> next month. You know what I mean? It's like you take on yeah. all these roles. Yeah, yeah. And it feeds you your creativity. It feeds how um, you bring your own style you bring your own music into these genres yep. and uh you, you swim or drown sure <laughs> yeah i hear that yeah we're gonna swim or drown on sunday yo yeah oh big you know? time i'm yeah. really looking forward to it yeah and john so, while i'm at it i gotta say i have such great respect for you as an artist oh. as a person hey you bring uh, you know there's lots of musicians who are very derivative and they kind of have a direction that is somewhat recognizable. Oh, this person's listened to this person a lot and mm. I can hear a lot of that in their playing or blah, blah, blah. You are a very unique musician and, and, and wow. an innovator in my mind because you'll play stuff that kind of comes from all these it, it reminds me of me a little bit wow. you know you've listened to so many different styles yeah, yeah. and so you'll all of a sudden it'll be oh is that's a little keltnery oh there's a little sure r and b oh there's a little punk oh it's a little yeah cool. you ha you draw from you. an incredible wide well and i'm a big fan and that's why i call you thank you yeah thank i appreciate you. it thank you yeah i mean that that's all i try to do yeah you know well you're not trying. You're doing well, it. Well, yeah. But don't you think? And then, I guess we got. We have to start wrapping it up. Yeah. But <clears throat> I don't know that any one person has the same nodules. You know what I mean? Nobody does. Yeah, and that's what's cool about it. it just right. and just realize, you know what? I can only just I can do what I do. This is my take on it. Mm -hmm. and my combination. Yeah, you're right, Keltner. Yeah. yeah all that stuff i hear all that stuff yeah you yeah know? but funny. you make me laugh too i mean in other words yeah well. to me um 
the combination of of pocket, which you have in spades, oh, and thanks. not every drummer I know does, um, style, uh, humor, yeah, joy. Yeah. Sure. I mean, yeah. music is if a celebration. If you catch me in the right moment, yeah. <laughs> yeah, you know, and yeah. so you'll do stuff, and, and, you know, you bring such joy and you know, left of center, less, it's, yeah. it's not an ex- expected thing and sure. you play it different even for a minute. And then, yeah, it's oh, just, funny. I just really enjoy, wow. uh, the, uh, the, the, the musical swath you have, but the joy that you have. And I, oh, thanks. Yeah, yeah. I appreciate Thank it. you. Thank you. Yeah. I, yeah. I try, you know, I try, yeah. I like yeah, to have yeah. fun. Yeah, it's, it's obvious. Wow. So yeah, when when is this uh, going to be aired? Do we know? The, yeah, w- this will probably be up by Friday, so oh. it might help us. Oh, good. You know that's yeah. that's the plan. Yeah. So it'll okay. help us for Sunday. So Great. um, right. Infinity Hall in Hartford. Yeah, that's right. Guitarness, which is me, mm-hmm. Jeff, Scott Morowski from Max Creek, Dave yes. Lavosi from everywhere. Yeah. And uh, we're going to be making stuff up, and yep. some things we're going to know. Yeah. But not really. Well, we, we don't know enough. We, we know. play them differently every time. Yeah, yeah, we just know enough. That's to, what we enjoy. Cool. You know? Yeah. Yeah, I love that. I love being able to kind of recreate every second instead of, uh, well, I should say create every second sure. rather than try to recreate because yeah. you can't. Yeah. I mean, you know, it'll never be exactly the same. And why should it be? Right. Otherwise, people could put on a record. Right. Right. You know? No, I appreciate it. Yeah. I appreciate it. Yeah. Uh, Jeff Pivar, he was here. Yeah. I, he was here. I had to. I, I'm in town. This is the first time I'm in town for two years. Right. How you know, about that? Because of COVID. Yeah, yeah. And uh, so I'm glad. I'm glad that you did this because I want to get yeah. you while you were here. Well, I'm glad you it know. worked out. And kudos to you guys for, you know, doing this show. Oh, and, hey. And keeping, uh, you know, uh, musicians like myself their stories out to the world. You know, one That's of the greatest the thing. things for me is if I can inspire another person to go after their passion then my job has been done. Yeah. You know? uh, we we want to pass the baton on, yep. you know, to other people who, uh, you know, might have that oh. angel, <laughs> that angel and that devil, you know, and the, the devil's going, well, you know, even though you want to do this, you can't. And then the angel is going, you know what? I, I have to do this until I prove to myself that I can't. Yeah. Yeah. I'm going to do it. Yeah. I'm going to make it happen. And if I fall on my face, that's okay. You yeah. know, I'm just going to go after it. And so know? far, Still doing it. We're still doing it. Still I doing think it. I'll be doing it until I stop breathing. So yeah, yeah. Word, word. All right, we're gonna get out of here, and okay. then we're gonna we're gonna rock out on Sunday. Yeah, you know. All right. Well, thanks for listening, folks. And, yeah. Uh, thanks for yeah. supporting the John Peckman podcast. The John Peckman podcast. Now these we have mugs now. This oh. is our thing. Oh, do I get one? Yeah, you, you're getting one right now. Here. Wow. Yeah. About that. Cool. Hey, look, I told you, kiddo, you stick with me. That's All right. Work. Yeah. <laughs> I am ready. Isn't that funny? Yeah. That's fantastic. Yeah, Thank yeah. you. Got our money. Anyway, no problem. Honor no to be here, Johnny. And Thank uh, you. Thanks for being it. my bro. No problem. No problem. <laughs> Jeff Pivar, guitar player, right here from Connecticut, been all over the world, doing it. And he's here now. You know what I mean? All right. John Packman Podcast. There it is. Uh, beautiful downtown Portland. Now, you don't have to listen to this. See what I'm saying? Um, John Packman Podcast, Connecticut Valley School of Music and Dance, beautiful downtown Portland. Come over to Bridge, start looking left. If you're listening or watching on YouTube, like and subscribe. Hit the, hit the bell to subscribe. And uh, if you want to have your own, very own podcast here in our beautiful studio, Dave, you listen for Dave at the end, and he will tell you how to do just that. Thanks for listening, kids. See ya. Woo! If you'd like to start your own podcast, give us a call at Connecticut Valley School of Music and Dance. Our professionally designed podcast space is here for all your recording needs. Rent out our studio to do interviews with up to four people to record audiobooks, social media content, and all other recorded material. Our rentals include a private studio along with our professional-grade podcasting equipment and We can customize your output to whatever your needs are. We also have green screen capabilities, which will expand to uh, video capability if you so wish. So check us out here at convalley.net forward slash podcast.